Welcome back, Wayfinders. Today is a big day. It's our first video in Germany and the beginning of five years of videos that will be in Germany until we move back to Michigan permanently. And in order to celebrate our new found German home, we're going to build a coffee table and I'm going to use the Lichtenberg fractal burning method also known as the Lichtenberg figure or fractal burning for those who don't want to say Lichtenberg or over say Lichtenberg. Now Lichtenberg is based off of or named after I should say George Lichtenberg who discovered a fractal formation and high voltage conductivity over a semi-conductive surface in 1776. A lot of sevens in this story as he was the youngest of 17 children and this is the way that he found to make his mark. A brilliant scientist found this two-dimensional fractal burning which we eventually evolved into a three-dimensional fractal electrical charge which we use in the Tesla coil uh, and other such experiments. We will not be getting into that today. In fact, I will not even be getting into how I built the machine that we'll be using today. I did a whole video series on how to make this and how to make it work, uh, what parts to use and exactly how to set yourself up. And then I realized I'm probably gonna get a couple of you guys killed. So I deleted all the footage. Not gonna show you what this connects to. I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing with it today. Just a few points of safety as we get started. I'll be wearing these welding gloves. They are dry to the bone. I am also wearing long sleeves today. I think that's also a first in my channel. And I will only be moving one of these at a time. You can see I set them up to be self-insulated and I can move them wherever I like. These are soldered to nails and then this is high gauge wire so we're good to go there. I will also be spraying some electrolyte solution in this repurposed Windex bottle in order to control the flow of the arc. The arc is going to be trying to get from both of these at the same time to each other. So if one area gets um, is not getting enough conductivity, I will spray a little bit of electrolyte solution on there so it can start that arc. However, once it burns off, electrolysizes the water in the solution and starts to establish its own carbon trail, the carbon replaces the electrolyte and becomes the new conductor. When that becomes too deep, I will either move this or I'll quench it with even more electrolyte and allow us to kind of control where these random uncontrollable patterns go. All right, so let's get started. Now what you're seeing is in real time. We'll do a little bit of burning like this, and then I'll do a time lapse. All right, you can see some interesting things happening here. Arcs are appearing where there is no connection to the main trail. Hit it with a little more electrolyte. See what it thinks. You can see bubbles coming up off of this one where it's electrolysizing. And if I soak this enough, it has an excellent contact point. So we'll see more activity over here. Now it's starting to get a little too deep here. There's a deep red crevasse. Try to light it back up again. You see some of it quenched it here. So I don't want to keep establishing that. It's going to get deeper and deeper throughout the day. So I think it's time to move this electrode. We'll bring it to the other side. Start it up. Still trying to follow that path. I might have to move this over here. There's your bright red path. This is where it's digging a little too deep into the wood. Awesome looking, but we can skip it. Leave that to not burn. Go directly to the where the action is. I'm loving this one right here. Ooh, a little too close. When these connect, it's gonna be too strong and I'll have to remove it. Hasn't connected yet. Still good. Let's see what happens if we connect it here. Nothing, go to spray. There she goes. 
Now we're getting a little too close where it's going to start jumping across and creating a Jacob's Ladder effect. So I'm going to go ahead and move that too. Love that sparkle. Beautiful. Now it's connecting every once in a while. That's that big arc. We're going to avoid that. It tends to just burn the wood instead of doing these awesome fractals that we're starting to see. Whenever it slows down, a little spritz electrolyte. All right, so it looks like you guys got the point. We're going to go ahead and time lapse from here. At this point in the project, I've gone ahead and let it dry for two days so the electrolyte doesn't gum up our sander and brush it off with a push broom and this little broom here to make sure that we don't have any carbon gumming up the sander as well. So it's basically just wood and charred wood at this point. Once we sand it down, it's going to give us a lot more contrast. But for now, I want to show you guys the depth of these grooves. And the best way to do that is to pass a light along at about a 20 degree angle instead of using this top down setup because right now you don't see any of the shadows. If I add in an extra light source like this, shadows are generated by any change in contour. This is a trick that I learn when trying to find human or animal spore or sign from an old tracker that I used to work with. Pretty neat. In order to stand this down, I'm going to be using my new DeWalt palm sander. Uh, this guy's pretty awesome. I love that it's 20 volt because once I move back to the States, I'll still be able to use the same setup with a slightly different charger. If I were to buy a bunch of 220 volt stuff while I'm here, it would be useless tools five years from now when I move back. Uh, I've loaded it with some 120 grit, punctured the holes so that we can uh, pull that vacuum and reduce the amount of dust. But that being said, there's still going to be plenty of dust. So I'll be wearing this and this and time-lapsing the entire thing. That turned out beautifully. I am in love with this method of wood burning. And if you've watched a channel before, you know I'm a fan of wood burning. I do it for most of my training aids here uh, on Follow the Compass North. Um, I'll probably find a way to integrate this into future projects. Maybe I can do a graphite layout and see if I can burn along the graphite lines and still do training aids, but with a more controlled chaotic fractal pattern if that makes any sense now i'm going to stick with the wax coating instead of doing like an epoxy fill or a resin fill at this time even though i know that those would both be great ways to make this easier to clean and lower maintenance i just feel like it'd be ruining something beautiful and i do not feel like destroying something beautiful today plus i can interact with it right now and it feels raw and organic and wonderful. So I'm gonna leave it as is. Worst case scenario, I fill it later. 
Uh, but for now, I'm gonna enjoy the piece of art that I made today. I'm gonna char the edges, build some simple table legs, and then have a finished product. It'll take me about two or three hours, but for you, it'll be done in a snap. Well, there you have it. Simple charred four by four legs and dimensional lumber, a little bit of lightning magic. You got yourself a decent looking, super cheap table. So if you liked what you saw here today, like, comment, subscribe, share, anything that helps the channel is greatly appreciated. Thank you and have a wonderful day.